Alrighty guys, welcome to a new video. Today we have a little bit of an interesting game. Uh, enemy team has quite another team comp. I don't actually believe though that the Vayne is trolling. I believe it's just due to the matchup she wants to go to this. Um, it's just smurfing. Probably not that good though. Anyway, regardless, I'm going to be hopefully showing you guys how to go about winning more games as a jungler and specifically as a Graves player. So this should be very informative for you guys and help you guys climb to higher ranks as many other people have done so. I'm going to be starting on red buff this game and going red Krugs Raptors into bot lane most likely. Also guys, I would just like to note that my mechanics are probably not going to be up to par with my previous videos for a small amount of time. I have a wrist injury at the moment from sparring. So do bear with me, although some of you may find this to be beneficial because more than likely there will be less mechanical outplays um, as my wrist doesn't perform uh, as good as it used to, at least currently. There we go, we've got the Krugs. I believe Shaco will be about here, so we're going to ping that out now. Uh, unfortunately, bot lane dies. Well, might look for a mid lane gank then on the way through. Actually, I'll probably look for an all in here, right? Bad Q for me there, by the way, guys. Gonna blame my wrist, though. That was not the wrist. <laughs> Alright, I will be able to finish pushing that out. I'm going to quickly probably walk straight bot here, actually. Yeah, I'm going to walk straight bot instead of going into my camps. There's the Shaco at top. We can see that he's done his blue and his whole bot side quadrant by the looks of it. I'm going to go in for this gank here. Looks like they do have it watered already. Beautiful. Basically maxed out there for that kill. Help these guys push the wave here a little bit, and then we'll take the base. Also, we had this used. You have to be a little bit careful now going back into our jungle, guys, because Shaco may look for an invade. A little bit risky for him, in my opinion, but he does have the action first move priority. I ping my ADC there. Be careful. Okay. Look, not ideal, guys, but it'll do. Oops, what the wrong one. Alright, we'll take our reset here. I think Shaco should be back around his Krugs right now. You see a little trade going in on the top lane. And as I said before, guys, Vayne is not actually Disco Nunu running it. Um, despite our runes looking that way. Whoa, brother. Oh, dang. Hopefully I should be able to go top here and get the kill. Hopefully my Shen doesn't do anything stupid here. There you go. There's the stupidity coming out. Don't know why we E flash. Fink can't get away. He just doesn't eat flash, Fang gets forced into him. And uh gets it all for free. But yeah. I knew that it happened. Always in lower ranks, these kind of things happen. People, you know, they don't know how to play fights out properly, so they'll like blow everything super fast. By the way, for those of you that are wondering about the rank, this should be about plat two to emerald four rank. The account I'm playing on is gold one. 
Also, oh, hello. Also, as I was about to say, it's a uh, 100% win rate account, that kind of stuff. I think I catch him here because I have boots. Let's see to get the fleet full work order. Beautiful. Shaco here. Smite the box, and he should die. Oh, beautiful. There was one auto in that fight that was not that good. My wrist is super fucking stiff. It's definitely going to be hard playing like this. I wonder if maybe it's not actually the best idea for me to play too much with uh, such an injury. We'll see. Might need to go to the doctor and uh, get a proper diagnosis, I guess. We'll see how it goes tomorrow. I'm feeling normally if most of my injuries they're like, you know, good in a day, so I'll give it a day, see how it goes. If it's uh, assisting, I might have to go and seek some medical attention. Alright, here we're quickly just going to pick up our camps and then reset. The reason we're picking up these camps, even though it's not the most efficient thing to do here, and there is a good argument for recalling straight away after that dragon, I really want to get my mythic item before I base for a larger power spike and I don't think Shaco is going to be able to do anything to punish me for this. The only possibility is he could maybe, maybe, maybe do the Herald but I do not think he will do that as in low elo people very rarely do these things and we can actually see Shaco is bot here. One thing to note though is because we didn't take that earlier reset we don't get to punish Shaco for this gank as we usually would because normally we would insta go to his blue buff and take all this quadrant rat. But because of what we've done, it's very hard for us to do that. And so now we're not going to get to punish him. And so I did actually lose something for overstaying for this item. And so you guys always need to realize this, that there is very, very high likelihood that if you do overstay on your resets and greed to get like some kind of larger reset, you are losing things or opportunities, despite you probably don't actually notice it. Like in this game, we lost the ability to counter jungle a whole quadrant, which would set Shaco behind a lot because he'd be starved, only having one quadrant for two and a half minutes, which is quite huge. For those of you that, um, you know, at jungle mains, you'll definitely know the feeling. What we shall do now, though, is we'll probably look for a vein at gank top lane and then maybe um, uh, into a herald play potentially. Okay, Vayne Condemned, which means no Condemn here. Eh, ah. Shaco. I don't know where Akshan is right now, guys, so that is my big risk factor. Until this Akshan shows up, I do need to be a little bit cautious. There he is, top lane. And I potentially get into a position here to do something. Thinking that I can. Bane executed, but this Akshan should have no E. Beautiful, so we're able to pick up the Akshan there. And since my Shen is TPing, I'll actually be looking to take all of this gold and XP on the push. Also, for those wondering, I actually think I could have killed the Shaco um, with a Q against the wall. And I did think of this already, I just forgot to mention it. But um, actually, didn't feel like I could move fast enough to get that. One thing also that this kind of video gives um, a good opportunity to talk about is... The impact on, you know, the actual physical element of playing League and how that can really impact your results, um, especially on a mechanical level. So, you know, if you're someone who's potentially using like the wrong kind of peripheral equipment for yourself, um, your body type, this is something that can definitely impact you. I have always noticed it. And, you know, before I kind of optimized my League setup, you know, I definitely noticed a decrease in performance. Some things that I think that are very, very important for your you know league gameplay are a good mouse pad and also 
you know, I clean the mouse pad. So for me, I buy a new mouse pad every three months. They cost me like $25. So for me, it's not particularly a large cost given that I make money from playing League. Someone who doesn't make money playing League, it could um, come like a cumbersome cost. I do believe there are ways to clean mouse pads. Um, I don't particularly do it myself, but for someone in a different situation, that definitely could be optimal. Goodbye, little bro. Yeah, so back to what I was saying, um, I do think that mouse pads are very, very important and often an, uh, pardon me, an overlooked part of people's gaming setup where they will actually not uh, buy mouse pads very often. Or, you know, I see people playing like on the back of a, a hard book cover or something like that. I think all of these things are very, very suboptimal compared to a good mouse pad. I may actually even link some of the mouse pads that I've used and found useful in the past um, in the comments below. I do have these types of things linked already in my coaching members area because I try to share a lot of this kind of insight in there. Nice. This is really big, by the way, guys. Because I killed that vein there, a real sneaky play. Look at all of this gold XP Shen has got a lead on. Shen's taken... Well, he's going to take all the plates here. By the time Bane gets back, right? With me, obviously, now. So, but not only does he get multiple waves in advance, two level lead, but he's also going to take all plates. And then I will be able to use the Herald in mid lane. Right, and so you can see that I'm not wasting Herald here, which is a very, very crucial part of this play. A lot of people here in this situation would just have wasted Herald on Shen's lane, and that would actually have cost them a lot in the long run. You know, upwards of maybe... You could say sometimes close to a thousand gold people will waste in a game from having a bad Herald usage. So right now, we're going to run mid, use the Herald mid. Obviously, if I could actually use a bot, it would be better, but the timing just doesn't really allow for it safely. And you'll also notice that because my mid has trolled, it becomes even more beneficial to use here mid. Okay, nice. Huge sequence of plays there, guys. It really changes up the outcome of this game. You know, this game potentially looked a lot harder before we got this. Basically, like three or four consecutive plays off. Anyway, I'm going to kill this and then I'm going to take the reset have all my camps up guys so i don't want to be out for much longer because i will be again be getting punished for not having taken that reset and i already was being punished to some degree for not having taken that reset but i was getting a better payoff than what it was costing me so i was happy to do that now we're gonna do a full clear top to bot and we should be in a really good spot we're basically 1v9 in this game here and we've created a game where we've taken out most of the element of luck from this game and we're in full control of the outcome at this point in time Whilst I have a bit of spare time, there's nothing too pressing in the game that I need to talk to you guys about. Another thing that I think is very important for people is going to be mouse slash keyboard combination. Finding, you know, a keyboard that fits your hand well so that you can utilize all of the things you want to utilize. You know, your QWER, um, you know, S probably is also pretty beneficial. A is pretty beneficial. And then your hotkeys, I'm um, sorry, your F keys, pardon me. So having, you know, a keyboard that fits your actual hand so that you can utilize all these things, really big deal. And then the other thing is obviously having a mouse that, um, you know, is very comfortable in your hand. For me, I use a pretty odd mouse or what most people would consider pretty odd mouse, um, Mad Cat's Rat. And it's like an adjustable mouse. Holy shit, we clutched it up. My teammates were not looking there at all. Anyway, we got all the kills, guys. Um, I want to just base here. I don't want Shaco to be able to get me for this 1,000 gold shutdown. Anyway, I think these adjustable mouses, like the Mad Cats, Rats... Ah, uh, fuck, it's a tongue twister to say. I use the R8. Um, I think these kind of adjustable mouses are really, really beneficial because you can have it weighted to the weight that is most comfortable for you and then also shaped in a way that is most comfortable for you. I think it also 
in my opinion, would decrease the chances of wrist injuries. But, um, you know, with I think all of these wrist injury type things, there's no real concrete evidence or proof as to what's best. At least I really struggle to find it. Um, so, you know, you kind of just what I'd recommend is probably what feels best is probably going to be what is best long term. That's the way I've approached it. And I've had no, whilst I have a wrist injury now, I've had no wrist injuries from actually playing League, uh, but I have had multiple from uh, sports and like work and things like that. My teammates uh, really played that one quite terribly. Okay. Nice, another one. Let me go into Shaco's topside here, counter jungle his camps, and also grab the Herald. Hello, Vane. Goodbye, Vane. All the top lane tank players are rejoicing watching this gameplay. They're all extremely happy watching Vane be punished. Beautiful, we've got the Herald. I do want to play around this dragon, but I have my Black Cleaver to pick up actually. And I also think that they can't particularly rush this dragon because of the lead we have. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to clear my two camps on this quadrant and then go to the dragon. Now I would ideally like my teammates to be getting the golden XP on the map here. Um and also I could definitely micromanage that better. So I just drop a couple pings there. Beautiful. All right. Well, I don't really know why we're hitting it. Makes no sense to me. Don't know why we're letting that happen. My teammates, you know, are not particularly understanding the situation here too much. Like I say often, my teammates uh, definitely seem to have that horniness for the dragon that you see so much in Loilo. If you see, did we need to be fucking around doing dragon then? No, look at the other things that we were able to get, right? <laughs> so, I think it comes back to the same thing as always. Uh, you know, don't tunnel for shitty dragons. Dragons are often not the win con. They're just like a stat checking device you get to have for late game. Um, in solo queue, they're not that important. Obviously, in pro play and high elo, of course, they take on a much different role. Games are, you know, much harder to 1v9. I mean, there's just a bunch of things, right? But yeah, in these low elo games, don't worry about it so much. What? What just happened? Blame my fucking khaki wrist, man. You my teammates killed them all that. I, bro, how did I even order that zillion, man? Nice. Teammates are performing here, though. Beautiful stuff. Great Shen ult again. And that's it. That's all that she sung. GG, well played, guys. Hopefully, this helps you guys improve your gameplay. I'll quickly show you guys the stats here after the game. Um, as I said before, it should be about a mid plat game, even though this count's ranked gold one, the MMR is much higher. We've only lost one game this season on this count, so it does have a pretty nice scoreline.
Also, if you guys are interested in improving your gameplay much faster and further than just watching these videos, you guys can check out my coaching, coachmanga.com. You can book one-on-one -on -one coaching sessions or also join my members area. Members area gives you, you know, monthly access to me as a coach to submit VODs, get them reviewed, and also clips and things of that nature. Really the best place you can be to get rapid improvement, even if you're already getting coached by me or even someone else. I think that it's, you know, a very valuable resource. As you guys can see, here's the damage we did. Nearly 1,000 damage per minute here. This is the runes we took. Pretty standard runes. I definitely think that at the moment, the domination secondary is better. And we went a lethality build here. I should hopefully have a Triforce build gameplay out for you guys soon. If you guys are looking forward to that Triforce gameplay, just leave a comment down below. Obviously, you know, the more demand there is for things, the faster I seem to be able to get them out. Um, so just prioritize them differently. Anyway, guys, until next time, appreciate everyone who tuned in and watched. Good luck on the Rift. Peace out.